I am Bill Cartwright with Living Right with Bill Cartwright. And this is the Stress Mastery Podcast, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress mastery. Hello and welcome to another episode of Stress Mastery Podcast. I am Bill Cartwright and I am here with the super millennial, David Barreto. Happy Hell Huddles, David. Happy Hell Huddles. <laughs> <laughs> so this week our topic is fear and for today's health huddles we are going to be continuing our series on the true cause of weight gain and obesity with part two insulin resistance so over the last five or six episodes of health huddles we have dispelled several myths of the cause of obesity and weight gain it is proven that weight gain and obesity is not caused by eating too much fat. It is proven that weight gain and obesity is not caused by the lack of exercise. It has also been proven that the cure to weight gain is not eating less, another myth held by health and wellness professionals that believe the calories in, calories out theory. Now to explore the true cause of weight gain and obesity, there must be a cause and effect, which means if we address the cause, it must change the effect. So this week, let's look at the cause, and next week we'll take a look at the real evidence of the popular diets that people are using. But for this week, let's talk about insulin resistance. Insulin resistance is an impaired response of the body to insulin. This means that the body is not responding to the insulin hormone. The main areas that respond to insulin, they are the muscles, the brain, and the liver. This means when we become resistant, the body no longer allows insulin to enter. It closes and locks the door, keeping insulin in the bloodstream and causing metabolic chaos, which results in more insulin being pumped into the bloodstream, which causes inflammation, and this causes cortisol to release, and we have a mess that shuts down our wellness communication in the body. That was a lot. Uh, Got all that, though? Snowball effect. Yes. And all of this creates more and more fat storage, which causes the body to become catabolic. The catabolic state because of the increased insulin response, is breaking down the biomarker of health, the key biomarker of health, which is muscle. And this leads to the domino effect that we've talked about in the past. The biomarker breaks, the biomarker breakdown muscle is breaking down the body and the body's not repairing. So as muscle comes down, the strength in the body comes down. You have joint issues. The BMR comes down, your body gets tired and doesn't burn calories. Fat increases. Now the elevated insulin response is causing a disrupted stress response, which is causing the biomarker breakdown, which is causing weight gain and obesity. Plus, the whole chaotic scene taking place in the body is causing disease. With the disrupted insulin response, we have a disrupted stress response, and this leads to the breakdown again of the biomarkers. As the first four biomarkers are broken and fallen, that leads you to the breakdown of the fifth biomarker, a decrease in aerobic capacity. When this happens, we have decreased energy and decreased concentration and memory. And when this happens, our brain is not functioning at high level. This increases biomarker number six is blood pressure because you're stuck in a red zone which increases biomarker number seven, blood sugar, which creates a type two diabetic, which increases the eighth biomarker, cholesterol, which creates heart disease, and nine, the ninth biomarker, bone density falls, and number 10, we have issues with temperature regulation. The body kind of makes, that's why a lot of people can be very cold, because you ever notice when you went on a diet, you were cold all the time, and what happened, you would start, because the body is trying to conserve energy by lowering the BMR, and one of the ways it does that is to make the temperature lower, so your body's not burning calories. So the disrupted insulin response, which leads to the disrupted stress response, which leads to the biomarker breakdown, which leads to weight gain and obesity, also leads to disease. The cause, 
insulin. The effect, if we get insulin managed, we treat weight gain and obesity. The cause of obesity is insulin. The effect of too much insulin is weight gain. So that's the cause and effect of weight gain. Any questions? No, when you break it down like that, it feels like, oh wow, that's yes. self-explanatory. Because it's time. There's a huge factor in understanding all of this. When insulin becomes managed, we then manage that stress response, which means we connect all the wellness hormones, which means our body is now anabolic. And this means the body is repairing, which means the biomarkers are now in repair. And so as you control insulin, muscle increases, strength increases, the BMR comes up. Now what's happening is your metabolism is working faster and fat comes down and you're all giddy and excited to look in the mirror. <laughs> we now have the effect of managing insulin. We lose weight and reverse obesity, okay? But wait, there is more. <laughs> I had to in my old uh, infomercial days. Number five, the aerobic capacity with the change in the muscle to fat ratio. The aerobic capacity increases and now what happens? We have increased focus. We have better memory. Our brain is functioning better and we have increased energy. And then number six, a decrease in blood pressure. We are no longer anxious. The anxiety leaves. Number seven, a decrease in blood sugar. We reverse diabetes. We reverse metabolic syndrome. We reverse the sugar issues. Number eight, decrease in cholesterol. We start to reverse heart disease. Number nine, we have an increase in bone density. And 10, we regulate our temperature to increase calorie burn. It's the, it's the reverse. All of this stems from the cause and effect the insulin hormone. Now, insulin resistance, and I'm going to go a little deeper now, David. Insulin resistance is the cause of obesity. Mismanaged insulin is the cause of weight gain, and they're very different. So let's jump in. To lose weight, reverse disease, increase energy, become more focused, and to master stress, you must address the cause of these issues. The cause is an unbalanced stress response, keeping the nervous system stuck in the red zone. Again, it is the insulin hormone. And there are three areas of the body that I mentioned that uses insulin. It's the liver, brain, and muscles. Mm -hmm. So when we address these three areas causing insulin resistance, we can see how insulin causes obesity and weight gain. Insulin resistance in the muscles can be addressed through exercise, especially weight training. Weight trained muscles produce a hormone called MOTS-C. It's M-O-T-S-C. The MOTS-C hormone is a mitochondrial signal that stimulates cellular glucose uptake, thus lowering the insulin response. The MOTS-C declines when the MOTC de declines, this leads to adult onset insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes. Exercise combats this. Insulin resistance in the liver is caused by ingesting too many carbohydrates, and this leads to an increase in triglycerides and a fatty liver. The proper diet, we use the, what's called the stress belly reset, can reverse this process rather quickly. How fast does it happen? Two, three weeks. And you see it in the blood work. This yeah. is no joke, right? It happens quickly. The, the thing with insulin resistance, we talk about the muscles, we talk about the liver, then there's insulin resistance in the brain. <laughs> the hypothalamic area of the brain controls the body's set weight. We talked about this a few episodes back. It's the fat set point. The fat set point is responsible for setting our body weight up or down. It is insulin resistance of the brain that causes obesity. Now, let me explain because this is important. Obesity is a disease that takes years to happen, right? Yeah. No one becomes obese overnight. So, insulin is the cause and insulin resistance is the effect of weight gain. So I can work the muscles, right? Insulin resistance in the muscles will not cause obesity. 
because I can work the muscles and reverse it, right? But if I work the muscles to reverse it, I won't reverse it in the liver. I could diet to do the liver, I won't reverse it in the muscle cells. And I can work on the muscle cells and work on the liver, and I won't reverse it in the brain. It's when it's long term exposure to high levels of insulin when the brain starts to get effect. Insulin resistance in the muscles will not cause obesity. It will cause diabetes, but not necessarily obesity. So it's it, I saw this working in the Philippines. In the Philippines, those are the little skinny people. Number one disease is diabetes. And the first time I looked at it, I go, wait a minute, they're not overweight. How can they be diabetic? See, it's not every what everybody thinks. There's a lot of thin diabetics out there. Why? They don't have insulin resistance of the brain. Now, insulin resistance of the liver does not cause obesity. It could create liver failure, as in alcoholics. Many alcoholics are not obese. True. Right? Yeah. But they still have insulin resistance of the liver. But they don't have insulin, insulin resistance of the brain. Yeah. So, But once insulin resistance reaches the brain, it's game on. When high levels of insulin reaches the brain, which takes time, people. It takes time. This is not happening overnight. And in fact, this is a very important thing I'll talk about at the end on the children. It takes time. And the brain, you have to remember, is what sets the fat set point. And when insulin reach, reaches the brain, the brain sets the fat set point to increase. The hypothalamic area of the brain controls that fat set point. And when insulin hormone affects the brain, our body weight goes up as the fat set point rises. Here lies the challenge of reversing obesity. If we start exercising and improving insulin resistance of the muscles, this has no effect on the liver or brain. If we reset our diet to improve insulin resistance in the liver, it will not affect the muscles or the brain. Now, Let's discuss the brain and insulin resistance because our brain, you must understand, is different. Our brain does not use fat as energy. It uses sugar and glucose alone. Insulin is one of the few chemicals that can cross the blood-brain barrier. And this is important as the brain is what signals the appetite regulation in our body weight, the fat set point. It's the key to it all. Insulin resistance in the brain is associated with, ready, weight gain, which we've been talking about, but also dementia, Alzheimer's, loss of focus, and decreased memory. It's no joke. Insulin is best known as sugar storing hormone. But as you will learn in coming weeks in this series, there's much more when it comes to insulin than just sugar. It would be a six-hour show if I did it all at once. Mm -hmm. When we eat carbs, carbohydrates, glucose enters the bloodstream. The insulin's job is to remove it from the bloodstream to the storage areas of the muscles, liver, and brain. The sugar glucose is used for energy or stored as fat for future energy. The brain is the biggest glucose hog in the body. It is the only organ that requires glucose. All the others can use fat. As we have stated, our body is built for one thing, survival. If you don't eat carbs, if you don't eat sugar, your liver converts protein into glucose called glucogenesis, so the brain is nourished. We said it in a past episode, body can't live long without the right fats. The body can't live long without protein. The body doesn't need carbohydrates. Yeah. It doesn't. This is a, a big misconception. The body doesn't need it. If blood insulin is spiked, especially if it's spiked over a period of time, insulin levels will raise and these insulin levels that are raised will also be raised in the nervous system. As insulin is crossing that blood-brain barrier and raising, it starts to create imbalances in the communication of the brain. The brain is key for communication of the hormones, insulin effects. One, the hunger hormones of the appetite regulating network. The ghrelin hormone and the leptin hormone. The ghrelin hormone tells you when you're full and when you eat. And the leptin hormone is what signals to burn or store fat. It comes from the brain. Also, insulin affects memory formation, cognitive function. It is the rise of obesity in children that may be the answer 
why there's such an increase in ADD and ADHD. It's, it's insulin. When the brain is bombarded by insulin, major problems occur. Diabetes, obesity, metabolic disorders, and neurodegenerative diseases like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's disease. The brain's job is to signal, and insulin is the prompter of that signal from the brain that reduces hunger and increases the metabolic rate. This is the process that controls what we call the HPA axis and the appetite regulating network. They're both controlled from signals from the brain. When the brain develops insulin resistance, it cannot receive communication to eat or to stop eating, to burn fat or to stir, store fat. Insulin resistance of the brain decreases the basal metabolic rate. We had a whole show on the BMR. We talked about that in depth a few, year, a few years ago, a few episodes ago, back on the episode on the myth of calories in, calories out. The brain decreases thermogenesis, thus lowering the BMR while it increased the fat set point. Yeah. There's a lot going on, right? So insulin resistance in the body changes levels of insulin in the brain and eventually the brain becomes insulin resistance and what do we have? Obesity. I want you guys to understand that does not happen overnight. Thank so God. so we'll think about it though. When we're working with obese patients, they it takes years to resist. The brain is the last area that becomes resistant. And so you'll gain weight. But when you go over a certain weight, that's when things start to change. And the thing is, you have to understand diet is not going to fix that. You're going to have to reset the body. And a lot of times, I've had I've had patients taking them, they didn't see results on the scale for three, four months. And all of a sudden, boom, it started to drop. You have to stay diligent because it, it takes time to reset that because it took years to set that in motion. It's important, but understand that diseases like Alzheimer's, and I want to get into this brain a little bit because it's important. Do you know that they're starting to refer Alzheimer's disease as type 3 diabetes? I did not know That's that. That's what they're doing. Insulin is important. It's so important for brain function. It's important for forming memories. It's becoming more evident that neurological diseases are being linked to insulin resistance. And so that's why they're calling it type 3 diabetes. So what causes insulin resistance? The answer, insulin. <laughs> and I know it's like if we are overexposed to anything, our body becomes resistant. The more of a substance the body receives, the less it responds. So if you use cocaine to get high, over time, your body will become resistant to the effects of cocaine. What do you have to do? I would hopefully stop. <laughs> no, <laughs> you want the effects. You have to. <laughs> Good one there, Dave. Just Good one, Super Millennial. It, it. Yes. You will need higher amounts to get the same high that you got. This is what creates the addiction. But the higher amounts of the drug will actually make you more resistant. So you need more to get the effect, and the more you take makes you more resistant. So this happens with antibiotics. Yeah, people, that's the one I was going to say. So antibiotics, people don't understand. When a doctor doesn't want to give you antibiotics, you should never use antibiotics unless you have to. Why? Because antibiotics will fight. But what will happen is you'll become resistant to antibiotics if you use them. Caffeine. Caffeine's another one. What happens is the body becomes resistant. You need more caffeine. Do you ever stop using caffeine for a couple of weeks and go back to it? It's a high like I love forever, you know, because it, it's the process that makes, it's the same process that makes the flu vaccine work. By giving you flu, you become resistant to the virus that causes the flu. So insulin resistance operates in the same manner as all the other resistances. So insulin causes insulin resistance. The more insulin, the more resistance. There was actually a study that was done to measure the effect of elevated insulin. And this is very important. Patients that were in the study undertook an intensive insulin treatment. The test group went from taking no insulin to taking 100 units per day. Now, during the, the study, their blood sugar, and I believe the study was over six months, their blood sugars were controlled to perfect optimal levels. In other words, the blood sugar was absolutely 
exactly where it needed to be, right? But the results were not, the, the results that were not expected was the patient's sugars got better, but their diabetes got worse. The more insulin they took to keep the sugar perfect, the more insulin resistant they became. The insulin resistance threw them into the metabolic chaos that I talked about earlier by disrupting the HPA access in the brain, which disrupted the appetite regulating network. And these patients gained an average of 19 pounds, even though their calorie intake was reduced by 300 calories per day. See, that's what happens. But their sugar was perfect, but their diabetes got worse. And so hormone imbalance is the cause of weight gain and obesity. And the insulin hormone, which is tied to the stress response, is the major player in this whole metabolic chaotic mess. The longer you are overweight, the more insulin resistance you become. As long as your insulin levels stay high, your fat set point will stay high. Out of balance insulin response causes us to gain weight. And out of balance insulin response for a period of time causes us to become insulin resistant and obese. Do you understand the difference between the two? Yeah. Very important. And so no longer when you get the, when you hit to that point where the brain is insulin resistance and you become obese, no longer can you diet to lose weight. Now the answer is you have to eat to become healthy. You have to manage the stress response. And that's the answer to it now. There's no more diets that work. That's why I try to get people off diets. So what happens is if we consume a diet, high in foods that provoke an insulin response, over time, you will develop insulin resistance. During this series on the true cause of weight gain, we will discuss ways to reset the insulin factor. So that gives us the ability to reset the fat set point. Now, here are some things that I've seen over the years that cause insulin resistance. The diagnosis of PCOS. You ever hear of it? Yeah. In the clinics, right? Polycystic ovary syndrome. What I did in the clinics, we started treating PCOS with metformin. But these people were not diabetics. Metformin is a medication used for diabetes. The reason we started using metformin was we knew that if we could control insulin, we could get their metabolism to kick back in. When you are PCOS, you have polycystic ovary sy syndrome, what happens is that what happens is to the body, the body becomes insulin resistant, which means it goes through the processes we just talked about. Now, another thing that causes insulin resistance is menopause. So we saw this a lot. As the hormones changed in the women, we saw that they would start to lose a hormone called adiponectin, which they then could not process carbohydrates like they normally process carbohydrates before. And so as they would eat their normal diet, the carbohydrates would start to raise the insulin. As the insulin rose, their body became insulin resistant and they started gaining weight. As they gained weight, their old diets didn't work like in the past. So that's what happens in menopause. Another thing I saw over the years was what caused insulin resistance was a low-fat, high-carbohydrate diet, especially for diabetics. If you're a type 2 diabetic, carbohydrates are not your friend. You need to get off them. You don't need carbohydrates. If you're a type 1 diabetic, I don't have advice for you. you got to master that with somebody who really knows what they're doing. We have two people in our stress mastery family that can help with that. One is Ethan and the coach. He is a type 1 diabetic himself who, when Dr. Brian saw him, said, man, that's that he's got that mastered. And then Alex, the dietitian, or my daughter, the registered dietitian, who, who does that. Because I don't do type 1 diabetics. Because that's, that's a whole different game. But if you're a type 2 diabetic and you're still having cereal for breakfast and you're still eating bread and rice, you are screwed. I don't care how much medication you get because the medication won't offset it. You will just get worse and worse and worse. And it will affect your brain. So the wrong diet really causes that. Now, here's the confusion. It's not just carbohydrates. And I'll get into that in the next couple episodes. I'm not quite sure how this is going to play out because I need you guys to be educated before we start giving you solutions. If you don't understand why we're giving you this particular solution, it doesn't make any sense. 
But insulin response is a response to all foods. So the wrong food combinations can cause insulin resistance. We had a patient. Remember the patient that came in that went on Weight Watchers and lost like 13 pounds? He lost 13 pounds and his diabetes went through the roof and his whole, and, and what he lost was almost all muscle. And because he went on Weight Watchers, he ate unlimited fruit. And the fruit drove his insulin through the roof, which his diabetes medication didn't control. And his diabetes, where we had gotten him off medication. He went, had to go back on medication. So the wrong food combinations at the wrong timing, the wrong timing of meals can cause insulin also overproduce and this can lead to insulin resistance you have to learn how to time your meals and the combinations of food in those meals see diet is no joke people you don't people in this program listen closely jim this is not a weight loss program jim he's, he's getting it down though <laughs> all right this is not a weight loss program weight loss is the side effect of it it's the side effect it is never the purpose the purpose is to manage that insulin hormone, which manages the stress response, which manages the nervous system, which allows you to live in the green zone. It allows you to have optimal health. And the side effect is you lose weight. So being too long, one of the things I've seen also, being too long in an insulin dominant state. That means that you could be in an insulin dominant state if you eat too late at night. I was going to say that the yep. timing itself is just as important as what you're eating. Yes, because the insulin dominant state, when you eat a meal, you release insulin. If you eat at 9, 10 o'clock at night and you're getting up at 5, 6 in the morning, you don't have a long enough fast between. And if you eat breakfast, you're in an insulin dominant state. You're never out of insulin. So fasting, I'll be talking about fasting and how fasting works. Because fasting is not not eating. It's the long you're going between your meals. That's why some people that really have insulin resistant will use intermittent fasting to reset it. And then we find out that you can't use that as a regular diet because it will recreate insulin issues. So it's always down to that. So one, I would like to have a final note and I'll close this out, Dave. It's on our children. People, insulin resistance causes obesity. Insulin causes weight gain. Our children might be a little overweight today, but if you keep giving them the foods that are causing them to be insulin dom dominant, did I say dominant? Dominant. Sorry, Claire. Dominant. <laughs> I was going to say that. Dominant. And your child might be a little overweight, but if you keep giving them the same foods that are causing them to be overweight, which are the foods that are causing insulin to spike, they will become insulin resistant and obese. It's very, very, very important that we begin to educate ourselves now on this. Sorry for the heavy science, David, but it has to go before we can give answers. Yeah, I, th I think the, the last part for what you just said touched home and especially like a, um, kind of like on a, on a personal basis because my mom has always been good. You know, I was growing up where Porsche control and we were always playing outside and stuff like that. So... When I would have these cookies or something like that, I never overate, ever. But there was no science to this back then. So what they're teaching you, portion control, calories in, calories out, yep. I'm walking proof that that didn't work yep. because she was strict on us and yep. I never overate, but I became very obese. Why? Because of the foods I put in, the timing that I put these foods in. I became insulin resistant over time. We saw that when I first, you know, when we got together and I did my blood work. And I'm telling you, it's it. What, what you see now is when, when you try to diet, you make it worse. You've got to understand dieting is not the answer. It's the management of the stress response. That's the answer. Cortisol and insulin are married. When they're working perfectly, cortisol is the releasing hormone, insulin is the storage hormone. When they're in balance, cortisol and insulin become the storing hormones. When they get impaired, well, there's no communication. You're always, everything you do stores. So when you look at those TV shows with those, those poor people weighing 600 pounds, the key to fixing them is getting insulin under control. That's when gastric bypass is the answer because yeah. it has to get insulin under control because they can't eat. Although I've seen them gain back hundreds of pounds too doing that. 
So that's a whole nother mindset episode. That's two. another. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. This is why this is a series. And listen through the series. And listen, if you guys, if this is relating to you, study this. If you have questions, please send us your questions. That's it for today's show. Our mission is to create a shift in the planet. You can join us on this mission by simply like, share, and subscribe. The links are right below the show. As always, until next time, stay inspired.